Hey folks, René Molenaar here for GNS 3 Volt. I want to show you how to solve the OSPF CCNA lab, number one. So what we're going to do is, I have a couple of routers here. And this lab will teach you all the commands you need to pass your CCNA. So let's start at the top with the goals that we have. Um, okay, so all the IP addresses have been pre-configured, we have a loopback and I'm going to start uh, with the configuration of OSPF area 0 and we need to make sure we advertise the loopback interfaces and have connectivity so let's see what we have so let me start with those routers And I'm going to start with router Durden. It doesn't matter all that much which uh, network commands you're going to use, but I'm going to be a bit specific. Just by uh, using the network commands that uh, uh, have the correct network addresses of the interfaces. There we go. And this is the last one. Here we go. And it seems we have an adjacency here. Okay, so everything seems to be okay. I got two neighbors on router Chessler. And I can ping the loopbacks. So it seems that we have connectivity. Good, so that's the first task. Uh, next part, configure OSPF area 1. And that's no problem at all. But I do see there's a little error in my picture here. Because on the right you see OSPF area 0. And that should of course be area 1. Uh, so let's set up area 1. On router Singer, Bird and Dent. Let me show you the networks that we have. And I make a mistake here because it should be area 1. There we go. This network, of course, the loopback. I'm a little bit too fast with the network commands because I almost automatically type in area 0. So that's router bird, that's all okay. Let's do router dent. There we go. So that's two routers. Router Singer. Here we go. And it seems we have a couple of neighbors, so this should be okay. And then the task is, okay, you should now have 
full connectivity for your OSPF network. Now of course we still have router Chesler here in the middle, which is an area border router, it's an area 0, the backbone, and area 1. So let's configure router Chesler as well. So we need to add one more network command here to make sure it's in area 1 as well. And it will take a while before we have a neighbor. But here we go. So I got my two neighbors here. Excellent. And okay, so we should check if we have connectivity. I'm just going to try and ping a couple of loopbacks here. And as you can see, I can ping most of them, so it should be okay. What else do we have? Change the router ID of router singer to 444444444 and make sure you can see the change by using the appropriate show command. So let's go to router singer. First of all, if you do show IP protocols, you can see it here. Router ID So let's change it. And the router is already warning you that you should reload your router or do clear IP OSPF. Because this doesn't take effect until you reload OSPF. So let's do it. And we'll lose our neighbor adjacencies. But now you can see the new router ID. So that's it. What do we have here? Question. Which router is the designated router? And the backup designated router that is connected to switch 2. And can you explain why? So let's look at this router. So you can see it over here. If you look at router singer. So because this is a fast Ethernet uh, segment with a switch in the middle, we need to do a DR and BDR election. And so either Chesler, Singer or Bird could become the DR or BDR. So I'm looking at router singer at the moment. And you can see that this one has become the DR. And this neighbor is the DR other or drother or whatever you want to pronounce it. Uh, which means that this router we are looking at now, Singer, is the backup designated router. Now why did this one become the DR? Because it has the highest IP address or the highest router ID for OSPF. Now you need to keep in mind that the... Um, DR or BDR election is non preemptive. That means that you have to reset OSPF before uh, it will do another election. So in this case, uh, 5555 was elected as the DR because it has the highest router ID, the highest IP address. Um, so what are we going to do? Change the network so router Chesler will be the DR. Test this by uh, resetting OSPF and using the appropriate show command. Okay, we can do that. Um, so let's go to Chesler. So this is the interface we are looking at. And you can see that this router over here is now the DR. And router Singer with the 44 router ID is the backup designated router. You can also see that the priority is 1. 
So I can change the priority. You can see after resetting, 555 is still the DR, so it's uh, still a bit stubborn, it wants to uh, be there as the DR, so we need to make sure we're going to reset it. So it will stay as the DR until you reset it. Now this is looking better. You can see now that 5555 is the DR other or drudder. And this one is the backup designated router, which means that Chesler is now the DR. And that's because the priority has been changed to 200. So you can use priority to influence who will become the designated router. Okay, so that's all good. Uh, what else do we have? We're going to play a bit with authentication. So between BIRD and DENT, we want MD5 authent authentication. Uh, on the serial link. So that's serial 1. This is how you enable it. Let's copy and paste it. So dent and bird. Here we go. And the second step is to <coughs> set a key. So let me see if I specified a key. No, I didn't. So let's just make something up um. you have to be aware that you uh, shouldn't use this command but you need this command message digest key set the key id md5 and this will be my password gns3 volt copy and paste it on this one here we go can do a debug and you can see it's working here authentication 2 means MD5 key ID 1 and my adjacency is still up so it seems that authentication is working what else do we have uh, plain text authentication uh, Okay, so on the fast Ethernet link on BERT and DENT. So this is the interface. So IP OSPF authentication to enable it and authentication dash key. Um, for the password um, bird and this one Let 
there we go okay so you can see I was too slow and my neighbor adjacency dropped because I had authentication on one side but not on this side and now it's back up because I just entered the key so that seems to be working as well that's all good what else are we going to do? Make sure all routers in area 0 send a hello packet every 4 seconds. If they don't hear anything after 17 seconds, they should drop the neighbor adjacency. So, you can set the hello interval. And you can set the dead interval if you like. And you can see it over here. Just make sure that they are the same on all of your routers. So that's the hello and dead interval. That's all that we have. What's next? Advertise a default route on router Durden in OSPF. Test this by checking reachability of its loopback1 interface. And we're not going to advertise loopback1 in OSPF. So, router Durden over here, router OSPF. Default information, originate. Make sure you use the keyword always. Because I do not have a default route in my routing table. And that's it. And if you want you can specify a metric or you can choose the metric type. External 1 or 2. But I don't care about that at this moment. And we can test it because... This loopback 1 has this IP address. Which should be reachable now. So you can see the default route here in the routing table. And we can reach it. So my default route is working. What else do we have? One more step. Configure router then so it will load balance over the serial and fast ethernet link. So let's look at router then. Show IP route. And you can see that everything will be sent down the fast ethernet link. Because it has a lower cost than the serial link. So what I'll do is just make sure that the cost is the same. Let's set it to a cost of 10. And we can check it. So we can see that the cost is now 10 and it's the same for the fast ethernet link and if you do a show IP route now you can see that we are load balancing for all of those networks because the cost is now the same. And uh, that's already the last task that I had for you. Um, so that's it, that's the OSPF CCNA lab number one. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, um, make sure you check out some of my other OSPF labs. Um, thanks for watching and till next time.